Hi, everyone. My name is Mary Pagano, and I'm the host today from Hera Media Group. And I'd like to introduce you to a really amazing woman. She's doing great work for women all over the world and for men and for humanity. Her name is Dr. Harbin Aurora. And she is a president and founder for several organizations that are, are doing great things on the planet. She's got five free platforms, the G100, ALL, WEF, She Economy, and we see all headquartered in India, but she's constantly traveling around the world. And we are friends of Harbin and her organization. We have several Hera ambassadors who and board advisors who are part of the G100, you know, part of the we see. I'm part of the we see. There's quite a few of us, Marinella, Sangita. So we really appreciate the hard work that you're doing. So what I'd like to say, Harbin, is welcome. Thank you, my sister. Thank you so much for all that you do. My soul sister, Marianella, does. And each one of us adding our bit to this beautiful garden. And together we blossom. Exactly. So I'm going to start with a few questions so people can get a chance to get to know you, Harbin. We know you very well. We love you. We love what you do. And we want the rest of the world to know what you're up to. Okay. So I'm gonna start out with a couple of questions here. Um, in which city in India were you born and, and how would you describe your family? So I was born in uh, New Delhi, in India. And uh, growing up was um, uh, a happy childhood, receiving a lot of love and watching a lot of amazing role models, um, women and men. And uh, the kind of women and men I would have in my head uh, as, as an idea, as uh, you know, I don't want to box anybody into what they should be, but uh, it was quite the contrast of what we see around and but what we are agitating collectively against. So I saw, saw a lot of feminine in, in the men. There's a lot of feminine understanding, care, uh, partnership, a supportive um, energy coming from the men and a lot of um, uh, the uh, independence in the public space coming from the women. So uh, I, I saw this balance and a very healthy partnership uh, growing up. And so uh, for me, that was the benchmark, like partnership is natural. And uh, you could be a man and you could be working in the kitchen or you could be ironing. Like my father would iron our uniform, you know, or uh, polish our shoes to get us ready to, for, for school. And uh, my mom would also be doing that, but she would as much be going out and working. Uh, I mean, ev every woman is working, like we say, only some are recognized and get paid for it and remunerated for it. And even for the unpaid work they do, only some get the recognition and respect for it. But she was going out in the sense of the labor force and she was working as a, you know, she was working at the IIT um, in New Delhi, which is uh, the equivalent of uh, the MIT in, uh, in Massachusetts, Boston. And so she was a science uh, uh, stu student, science professional and, you know, so both my parents, my father and my mother were stepping out to work. And uh, my grandmother was like the matriarch of the family. We lost our grandfather, paternal grandfather early. And, uh, but also at the same time, um, a very, um, how do I say, a very spiritual upbringing. So, um, uh, so there were a couple of things we did while growing up. One was study, study and study because education was very, very important. And I think it's uh, not just my family. I think people of um, this generation and especially in, uh, in Delhi, uh, there's uh, this generation, my grandmother's generation was the post partition generation. So India got her independence and there was a very painful period of partition. Uh, and uh, so that generation was, um, you know, uh, I think went through hell and came out of it whoever came out of it. And when they came out of it, my God, rock solid, they were with nerves of steel, you know? So really nothing, were, this was like an unputdownable generation. So I still remember, and I took that from my, my 
paternal grandmothers and I, you know no matter what she was going through if you asked her how were you and she had this way of saying i'm a1 which meant i'm top of the tops everything's fine you know and this could be at any moment and at any time of the day or in anything that's happening around us and i think so this spirit this positive spirit this unput downable spirit i think you just subconsciously imbibe all of that the independence of being a woman no barriers to education do whatever you want to do dream whatever you want to dream i have i have a sibling also a brother younger brother and both of us had really the same set of rules to follow in the house so there was no discrimination there were no barriers they were just the kind of role models that one would want to find these days around in general society as well so i think i was looking back you, you think you were maybe just sort of prepared for the role that you were going to play eventually in life so a blessed childhood thank you oh i could tell i could tell right away it was a blessed childhood you're very very lucky to have such a great uh, family absolutely you know absolutely. And, and, and inspiration um, i am raised I, I i have another question here for you hang on a second here I just lost my, okay. So um, did you choose to study economics? And I know you attended some other prestigious universities. What was your experience and what did those studies bring you? Um, I, again, I was, as I said, studying and, you know, the middle-class values of education being really, you know, that's what we hold even my parents everything was around us you know not only were they working or and after they were working or they came back home everything was around us so they were there to help us with our homework whatever they were doing or um, the school vacations when we had those two or three um, you know months of uh, free time uh, everything was what to what what is it so we were like the vips of the family you know everything was about us everything was focused on us so education and educational choices were very very important uh, but again you know when you're growing up you're sort of in a zombie state as well you don't really have the kind of awareness or consciousness uh, which comes later in life and that's also a very beautiful state to be in so I, I think I was just very studious. It didn't matter what I was studying. I, I was studious, I was dedicated. I was the, the good girl, you know, I was um, always a kind of um, consi very consistent uh, with the, and, and my parents wouldn't have it any other way. So my mother, especially, she would like the, you know, the discipline was at the core of whatever we did. So, so if I, if we had an, a weekly exam on Friday, so it's not like we're going to study on Thursday, we're going to start on Monday itself. We're going to start, you know, doing on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and on Friday mornings, we will wake up a couple of hours earlier to sort of revise. So it was an attitude education and educating yourself and constantly learning was an attitude and it went well with me because i think there are two words that define me uh, which is one is love and the other is learning and and those two words uh, are are very much that you know i grew up with and they have stayed with me and they are my two torch lights into the unknown and when i step forward i use either of them to make my next move you know uh, and uh, that's all i have those are the only two skill sets i have and that comes from this whole emphasis placed on learning and the love of learning did you have um a, a get a lot of spiritual teachings and did you have a guru i mean what what was that yes like? certainly you know in in india we always say every, every second person you meet is a philosopher so this is one of the oldest or the oldest living civilizations where what was available uh, 5000 or 8000 years ago is still very much alive and pulsating and thriving and throbbing in every family in the in the festivals in the in the culture in the mindset in the beliefs in the in the in the proverbs you hear in the way we process things in the world view the outlook it's very much it's present right so the fact that you're born in india you there there is you're already embedded in a certain uh you know 
worldview which is which is spiritual and you allow that spiritual dimension into you but intentionally as well because i was born in a family where my uh, my grandfather paternal grandfather and even maternal grandfather both were again very spiritually invested into the community so one would sing spiritual songs in addition to his profession and his his work that he had and and not my paternal grandfather would uh, give um, uh, how do you say um, d- d- discourses spiritual discourses in the sikh temple in the gurudwara i come from a sikh family and then there is this uh, beautiful tradition of the community kitchen i don't know if you went to uh, when you were in delhi the bangla sahib gurudwara which is like a sikh temple and that has an unbroken tradition for about must be around 500 more than 5 year 500 years now i think so yeah and uh, of uh, giving free food to anyone who comes in at any point in time and it feeds as a community and the community of course contributes you know uh, so it's part of the community's ethos to may- maybe donate some rice or lentils so that the community kitchen runs you know uh, in whatever way and then you even if you're not putting in any products or giving any donation you can just do um, volunteer service you can go there you can cook the food you can clean the place you, you can and so those were like our weekend parties so to say so we never really sort of went out to parties these were the parties we went out to to so and and, and as children it's it's you really don't know the difference because what's a party and what's not i mean there's people there's action this play um you get to learn something you're out there and and our parents would take us to uh, the gurudwara every week every weekend uh you know and to some of the other ones here so uh, in addition to some uh, learning excursion so you would go to the real museum or everything was an intention like the children should go there the children must imbibe these values the children must participate in all these things uh, so we really had everything so spiritual dimension was very much alive uh, in me as a soul as a person but it was um, amplified by my environment by the fact that i'm born in india i'm in a family which is very spiritually oriented i get to do practices and and activities which are in the spiritual realm uh, and yes i did finally meet my guru at the age of 28 i think and um, yeah that's it i'm a devotee of uh, shri satya sai baba and the first organization i founded actually is acronymed after one of his uh, used to have these one liners which are very like very simple and very profound at the same time and would encapsulate the gist or the essence of the vedic teachings so one of them was like love all serve all and i just that word all became the all ladies league you know and all as a philosophy so so all came from that and that's like the seed you know uh and then uh, help ever hurt never uh, or you know there's so many of them uh, like uh, the ego lives by getting and forgetting and love lives by giving and forgiving and i think just to sharpen your own spirit and to uh, find answers and he would always say that ultimately you need the guru outside in order to awaken the guru inside Ooh. your guru the one who's going to guide you on your path on the journey that's meant for you towards the destiny that's yours through the dreams that you have through the dedication and discipline and the work that you will deliver that guru is inside of you and the one outside is helping you to tune in within and be able to receive those answers from inside and trust those answers and just have the courage to listen to them and walk the path that's given by the guidance within so yeah that's the part about the spiritual energy that is so huge harbeen i think there's too many people on this planet that don't stop and listen to their to their inside voices because it really is everybody has the gift to do great things and it's a matter of really just being still to hear it so I, i like the idea that you have a guru to help you with the your guru inside i think it's bravo yeah it's it's like it's like a swimming coach for instance i mean you yeah. you can you can read a book maybe and learn swimming that's also possible but if you have a coach you know if you have a coach then you swim very differently 
So, um, but ultimately it's you who swims. Exactly. Love that. Love that. Another question for you. What was your first job and when did you decide to start an entrepreneurial business and in what sectors? I just, you know, my, um, everything in my life has been so, as I said, I just followed the love and the light. And it just took me to different places, to different journeys, to different adventures. And uh, when I, I only see this, all that come to manifest when I look behind my shoulder, because when I, I, I'm in the moment, you know, I, I'm just following the inner drive to do. And I'm just honoring that drive. And whatever gets created is a joy for me as much as it's a joy for anybody else who's watching and seeing with awe and admiration. I watch it exactly with the same awe and admiration. And I also remind myself it's not me. I'm an instrument to do whatever I'm supposed to do, whatever is emerging from my design and uh, the reason why I'm here. But it's equally and as much of other people who've joined in, uh, it's like the, the water and the fish, you know, it's, it's interdependent, it's a synergy, it's a solidarity, it's a togetherness, and especially what we are doing. So yes, I started, but I think my life changed and I started to look at society more seriously. I was very much into my own individual, you know, very much an individual person, my own, my own learning, very much a bookworm uh, into universities. You know, I did my master's, my, my bachelor's, my master's, my, my PhD. But I think the person who really made me look at society seriously is uh, now my husband and then my partner and um, a, a walking, talking encyclopedia, university unto himself. And frankly, I didn't know much about how to be in society, how to engage with society, uh, what to do. So I was pretty much on my educational track. That's the track I'd picked. But I think it was destined that we meet. And um, I learned a lot from him. And because I'm a good student, because I want to learn, uh, I, I picked up a lot from him. And because I trusted what he did, and I, I really kind of, uh, you know, he, he became a role model in so many different ways. I would just marvel at the way he would just, you know, the skill sets, of course, you know, knowing your finance, knowing your, you know, but, but just the, the bravery, you know, and a, a, a brave spirit, uh, a beautiful heart, um, and uh, a brilliant mind. You know, and I saw that combination that in, uh, you know, it, 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 it was divine, you know, and it was hard not to sort of kind of just see it with all the love and admiration it evokes. And uh, I followed that for a very long while. And at that same time, I met my spiritual guru as well, which was a calling already. So I, I think I first went for that, the spiritual part. And at the same time, I became a silent student of, uh, you know, this whole, the way my husband would kind of work, create his businesses and work in society. And uh, I was an understudy for a long while. And then it's like they say, when, uh, when, when, when you're learning many languages, when you're a young student, you know, you're learning four, five, six languages, uh, you may not speak all at once, but when you do speak, you might take longer to speak. So, but when you do speak, you speak all of them at once. So I think a bit like that happened to me. I was an understudy in when it came to business or entrepreneurship or community building or, you know, just societal engagement, leadership, all of that. I was an understudy just watching him and, and, and clearing my own path with the spiritual dimension, which was my first calling uh, for about, I would say, 10 to 15 years, you know. And then it all began to sort of manifest all of it together. And one after the other, the platforms kept coming, kept coming. And it seemed like um, a continuity. I never felt an effort. Uh, it was just natural because I have the ethic of hard work. I have the spirit of learning. Uh, and uh, I had the support of my family. I had the support of my husband. Uh, so I, I think I had a lot of blessings going for me. And there was no reason not to, 
you know so i just sort of pushed myself and said you know and i that's what i do even now that what's your excuse to not do you know i do often bite more than i can chew but then i always tell myself you know i've also been very privileged and very blessed so if not me who if not now when so you know constantly uh, pushing yourself in a good way in a good way i also take my moments of rest and i don't believe that uh, you should uh, i mean i i do believe in the power of resting your mind because uh, uh, even god gave what you know like in the bible i think they said sunday is the day of rest right so uh, if even the maker took uh, a day of rest so a day of rest is very due and i and i believe totally in the power of that and uh, you know that that spirit when um, when you just sort of let everything settle in and uh, you know let let nature do its own filtering and like like what the brain does when it sleeps at night right when you sleep at night the brain automatically sort of organizes reorganizes and connects the dots differently so it's absolutely integral to um, and which is not what i was earlier i think that's the spiritual dimension in me and as also the element of compassion that has awakened in me because of the coming together of the spiritual and societal dimension together the creator and the creation you know it it comes together and and you realize that devotion is when you put the energy of your spirit towards the creator and compassion is when you put the same energy towards creation and both are the same sides and i think that has been the most uh, blissful part of the spiritual journey is being able to bring these two worlds together uh, the 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 humanity and the blossoming of humanity which we can call divinity and um, um, that's also very much the indian way of looking at things saying god is inside of you and that unknown is in the known in the microcosm is the macrocosm you know so so i think just all that has it's been a flow it's not been um, it's not been any kind of uh, conflict an internal conflict i mean there are challenges um, on the way of working every day but nothing in terms of oh, i wanted to do this but i'm doing that nothing nothing existential like that i've been very much aligned and flowing where my heart is with my mind all of it together so that's another blessing otherwise not everyone has the privilege of being able to do what they love and love what they do and do what they love uh, in my case i don't know whether it's my personality that makes me love in any case whatever i do or is it just the way it is so i i really don't know but whatever it is i'm very blessed to be in that state of flow you know i think you you had such a healthy upbringing right that gave you the freedom and um to, and you didn't have fear and you just act right so, true true but but when you do good things for humanity and the planet when you do these things the universe opens up to you in such ways that, that it makes the flow so easy and um yes and sometimes when people are struggling it's because maybe they're not where they're supposed to be they do you know doing right yes i mean i had my moments of struggle like i think adolescence and you know growing up but i i think they just came to me so i could perspectiveize that and i could understand this is what struggle is and can be uh and it came for a limited period of time like a year at a time and then it would just go away but it would teach me in that time and it would be a humbling lesson that this is the other side this is what it is like right yeah. so it, it has come to me but i think it has come to me as a matter of my curriculum as part of that this the is lesson. what you need as, yeah. yeah yes absolutely that this is what you need to know as well and what you need to to learn as well and this can happen as well uh and those those periods were also very very interesting because i think those those were the times when um, i mean you you really find a different kind of strength in you you know and a different kind of self awareness in you uh and those moments were very important as well the the conflict or the dark moments you know the, they never came to stay but at that time you don't know that Uh, yeah you know, no you like, don't you don't know that you you think it's here to stay this is how it is you know 
um, but looking back, you realize they just came to teach you a few lessons, which would be very important to have as perspective on your path, uh, so that you could also, um, you know, just be more understanding of the world around you and uh, be, uh, I don't know, just uh, be more human. Be more human. Love that. That's true. Be more human. Another question for you, darling. What difficulties did you have in your country as a woman? Well, as I told you, in my in my family, I I really never faced. Um, I didn't know for the longest time that the, actually there's a difference in the way that women are spoken to, and the you know young girls are spoken to, and young boys are spoken to in different ways by their parents. I didn't know that. Uh, that young girls are given different kind of food to eat than young boys. I didn't know that. That choices about their education are taken differently. The amount of money that's going to be spent on them is taken differently. How, when, who they're going to marry is thought about differently. I didn't know that for the longest time. And uh, so I just went in with like, like you said, a very healthy upbringing. And even in my school, um, I was, uh, it was a co-educational school and there were boys there, but I was, I would say I was a, I was a bit, bit snooty and snobbish when I was growing up in school and like, okay, listen, I know better than you guys. I can do this better than you guys. You know, I mean, it was, it's just like stuff when you're growing up, like any team, you know, you're sort of figuring out yourself. So I, I was a school head girl. Everybody was very scared of me. I was this disciplinarian and everything has to be right. And you know, that, that, that spirit still carries over. I still remember my character certificate. We used to get this character certificate from school and they wrote a, a soft but firm head girl of the school. And, and that's pretty much what I have stayed. <laughs> you know, I'm, uh, and I remember at the, we had a farewell, uh, you know, party at the, at when we were, you know, uh, at the 12th standard. So the 11th standard will give you a party or whatever. And they used to make these badges for everybody, uh, like, you know, a farewell, whatever there. So, so they gave me a badge called Mother India, you know, and uh, so, so that's who I was, you know, very much Mother India. And that was the time when we had Indira Gandhi as our prime minister, you know. So oh, wow. I think they're internalizing that role model as well. For me, for me, for the longest time, a prime minister was a woman. That's who we saw. Yes. So if you, I still tell people, if you can see it, you can be it. Exactly. You know? Exactly. What a gift that you get had that you had a woman. Yeah, leader. absolutely. And in the United States. <laughs> yeah, and even the leader of the opposition. I mean, I don't know if she was like the, technically the leader of the opposition then, but she was a very, very prominent figure in the opposition party, which is now the governing party, the ruling party, which is the BJP. And uh, uh, late, uh, she passed away early. And uh, her name is, um, uh, she's late Sushma Swarajji. And I was so inspired uh, by the way she would speak. Her speaking was like, like nectarine. You know, she had this uh, command over language and over sentiment and uh, the way she, I was like just, I want to be like her. I mean, you have these incredible, and I remember we had the, the first woman IPS officer at that time, Dr. Kiran Baby. You know, I'm blessed to be in touch with him, to touch with her, and be on panels with her, and she, an incredible role model again. Uh, I think she became famous because she gave a ticket to the Prime Minister's vehicle that time, you know. <laughs> so suddenly she became very famous. And so we, we had these very, just one off. The only only woman prime minister, the only you know woman in the opposition, or 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 the more visible ones and the, the first one. But what incredible powerful role models like one to one million, you know, these that was the power of these role models. I mean, they were they were icons. They were icons. So I I have been also very blessed to have icons, you know, around me as role models. You know, very very powerful figures even in, as my guru and, I, you know, I mean, they're really blessed to have great teachers. And if you can have that, um, I mean, it's, uh, you, you constantly stay in a zone of inspiration. And uh, if that's your quest as well, and, uh, you know, so even now with the G100 Club and the Wiki, which is, you said, we see, we, we see, and in, in Malta, in Italy, they say, Wichi. Uh, so it's it's nice to <laughs> have different ones, but yeah, the, all the platforms, uh, just 
all of them i'm you know seeing these icons and and these icons don't have to be you know you don't have to be famous to be an icon you you are yeah. iconic in your incredible energy yeah. um, i mean the, i i see beauty in the struggle of everyday woman her never say die spirit i mean she goes on and on and on i mean uh, i, I ha- there are times when i wonder you know the kind of work that women put into keeping their families together oh my gosh keeping oh. everything together and no matter what it takes you'll never say i mean it's 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 quite divine i mean women are iconic yeah. every woman is. they are they are but i started with that you know i started with that i thought you know when you're growing up you look at iconic as iconic but i think when you mature and you're wiser uh you you and you more human you really begin seeing the iconic in the everyday woman every yeah. woman a super woman really yes you're absolutely right they they did deliver and put everybody on the planet <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, so there's that yeah um okay darling one last question i have here for you um when and why did you decide to dedicate to philanthropy to create the platform that currently bring in the 500,000 women in 150 countries around the world with that objective when did it's you it's been start? a journey of about more than a decade now uh that we started we have some institutions universities in india we started by giving the free education to girls from underserved uh, communities and that was a game changer at that time but then after that we realized they 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 got jobs and they started working but the moment they had those life cycle changes you know they were getting married or they had children suddenly again they came to back to square one kind of situation with the same kind of voices around them saying quit this for that give up this for that uh, you know so we realized we needed um, a networks and and conversations and peer groups and so that's why we started Uh, what we call shakti bandhan or the sisterhood bond and we have we keep wearing these bands uh, we give to each other and these are the solidarity bands saying the she for she support uh, where can i have support where you know because every woman is going through the same kind of struggle mm-hmm. be whatever part of the world and so can we create these groups where we can just sort of just hold the space for each other emotionally connect to each other be there for each other and become chakras of energy just zones of energy creating energy because it's not the conflict or the challenge that is the problem women are natural solution seekers they they find solution that is not such the skill set is not the problem at times we just run out of energy we are exhausted uh you know so we are shakti we we are the center of energy you know look at any woman and you never doubt that you know uh, she doesn't know how to take care and harmonize and take care of the conflict and balance stuff around she's balancing relationships and the family i mean if there's no woman there's no family she's the uniting force of the family she's the one who's keeping everybody together and you know so but there's a cost to that you know it takes a lot to make that happen you want to make that happen that's what women you just do not we we want to make that happen love is a priority for us and we want to make it happen but at times you just run out of energy you just tired of fighting the same battles again and again and again every day be it in your home or at your workplace but when you do find other women who are going through similar stuff and you're able to share and exchange and laugh and cry you found find your energy back and in addition to the collective power the power of knowing oh somebody's got my back and i can turn to somebody and also the power of the collective on the table you know having those that sisterhood you know that uh, now i think there's a study as well that if there are 10 people on a table and you need three women to 10 people 30% should be women in order to make your point so one is not enough right because we are discounted constantly and there's a diminishing of what we are saying and uh, discounting of our intelligence that happens right because we are women we don't know right 
no matter how educated you are it doesn't really matter so uh just if three women are there and say oh what may we saying makes sense and yeah herbie i agree with you and yeah i I'd, i'd back that so if three women are getting those seats on the table and helping each other we can actually get our point across you know so that's solidarity and and that takes it's less exhausting you yeah. know if if one woman is to try that much harder uh somewhere you sort of begin to resent it you know some way you begin to have some negativity around you and why should we we should be doing our journey with happiness so having sisters makes it a happier journey an easier one and uh, we learn on the way we laugh on the way and um, yes there are some challenges to take care of and those are interpersonal issues but i think that's a, a temporary phase uh, when you truly have even one bond that works for you you and you are nourishing and nurturing that bond you realize the importance of that bond and like in india we say one and one makes an 11 you know you really understand the multiplier power of that bond that two is better than one and um, you become wiser on the way you know no relationship is easy uh, you know mother and child husband and wife siblings friends it's not easy so i'm not saying this is like magic it's got its own share of its own journey but uh, our job is to keep up the inspiration and that's why the shakti bandhan is so important for all seasons all reasons and so whenever we meet we keep up the energy of inspiration uh, very high so uh, you tap into the better inside of you you tap into the abundance inside of you the positivity the spirit of celebration the the generous spirit uh, and um, you know it's is uh, makes uh, the bonding much better the relationships much easier the trust more instant um so it makes it easier bravo bravo i really love this conversation darling really loved it really loved it we're kind of coming to a close and i will let everybody know that i'll have your bio and how to reach you and how to find you connect join your platforms um uh, but i want to ask you one last question before we leave and is there any last words any words of wisdom that you would like to give to all the women out there i mean surely to everyone and my my sisters and my brothers but my sisters more so uh because we tend to you know we are going through our lines share of troubles at the moment uh for a long while and just one second my sister i think there's a call coming in just a second okay yes so my um words of wisdom or words from a sister to another sister to another brother are just this that uh, you are loved you are unique you are here for a purpose you embody a design that's meant to be exactly the way it is you are enough and beautiful exactly the way you are uh so if you like certain things about you and don't like things certain things about you that's okay but step away from the judgment a little bit and learn to love yourself exactly as you are with the strengths and the weaknesses that's part of your design uh, a cup is meant to be a cup um a plate is meant to be a plate um a glass is meant to be a glass and those are our designs we came with those designs so if, if we have something it's evident it's part of the design to not have something and that's meant to be so uh, embrace your strengths uh, understand your weaknesses honor your design believe in your dreams and just go do what your heart tells you to do you are loved you belong to yourself and to the family of the universe and if you'd like to join a beautiful family of sisters reach out to us at any time we are there for you and you are not alone great thank you harbeen thank you everyone for joining us today we'll see you on another episode thanks again harbeen chat with you Thank all you. later goodbye bye bye